Ja, lep pozdrav od ekipe BIS815.SC. Tokrat smo imeli možnost govoriti z multi-instrumentalistom Jorgenom Monkebijem, ki ga verjetno najbolj poznate kot frontmena norveške zasedbe Shining. Nekaj nam je povedal o svojem aktualnem glasbenem doganju in pa tudi o live stream koncertu, ki ga bo skupina Shining gostila 6. junija. Več si lahko pogledate na povezavi. Zaradi tehnične težav na začetku intervjuje nekaj minut manjka in sicer v delu, kjer Jorgen razlaga v ponovni izdaji skladbe The Madness and Damage Done z albuma Black Jazz. Celoten intervju je potekal prek Skype povezave in je v angliškem jeziku. Vse pa Jorgenu zahvaljujemo za njegov čas in voljo, da se je z nami pogovoril. Tako da uživajte. I prepared myself and I went to his place in Nuttoln, which is two and a half hours away from Oslo, and we re recorded the sax. Um, so that's that's how I knew him. Uh, and when the Black Jazz album came out, I uh, I wanted to have a, a follow-up single to release after the after the album was out. So I I asked him if he wanted to to record. Uh, vocals on the song Man the Son of Damage Done. So and he yeah. said yes. So he so I sent him the the instrumental version and he recorded vocals and I got them back and I I was going to kind of work on it and mix it and edit it and finalize it but I never got around to do that. Uh, and I think part of it was also that we were waiting for another we were planning on maybe releasing a physical EP or a single or whatever. And then so it needs to have at that time, you know, we didn't Spotify and streaming stuff wasn't that important. So you had to have more than one song to, to release yeah. something. So we never really released anything. Um, so those tracks were just stuck on my hard drive and I, I forgot about them. And then uh, after five, seven years, I got the rights back for Black Chess. So now I, I kind of, I'm, a, I'm able to release it myself if I, I was able to do that if I wanted to do that and um, and it's sold out so it was unavailable on vinyl and CD for several years and when when we started getting closer to the 10 years anniversary which is to this year yeah. uh, I, I came up with this idea of maybe re-releasing the album again so people yeah. could get it as a physical version, because people had asked me about that for, for many years, um, and and that then I I remembered that I had this these tracks from Ishan lying around somewhere, so I had to go mm -hmm. into my closet where I have all my old hard drives, <laughs> and, and and go through them. I had to find his email. I printed out his emails. I had the email as a PDF on my laptop, but I didn't have the files, so I had to find find the date. Of when I received the files, and then try to find, figure out if it, which disc it was. If it was a 2009 disc or 2010 disc, um, and then I so I found the files and I started editing them and and uh, you know working on them. And I figured that this sounded fucking awesome. So I asked uh, Ishan if he, I sent him a mix, and he said he loved it, and he said he would be happy to get it out. But I was missing a couple of things because he had only recorded the the first chorus, and the, there were more choruses towards the end yep. of the song, and they were also in a different tempo because we're slowing down the song towards the end. So, so I had to edit those, and he was, and he was also, uh, I also wanted a little bit of an extra black button scream in the beginning and in the middle and on the end, which I didn't have. So, when when Vega, which is his real name, when him and I went to the 70,000 tons of metal cruise in the Caribbean in January this year. We played with Emperor, because I'm playing keyboards with Emperor now, and I've done it for for two years or something like that. So we went there and we had an, uh, about a week or four or five days on that boat, just playing shows in the evening and nothing to do in the daytime except just getting sunburned. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, we just sat in. We took we took off like we took half an hour in in my room on my, on the boat with my uh, live microphone and my live sound card and just recorded 
some of those screams and then basically all the other stuff, all the all the verses and the courses and stuff, those are original 2010 recordings. And then there was just a little bit of a the opening in the middle and the ending scream are 2020 recordings. Yeah. So that's the full story. Uh, and then we included that. We released that as a single uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I also included that song as a bonus track on the LP. That is uh -huh. that I'm selling now on our merchandise store, which is the only place in the world that has it. So I have them all. I've just been, you know, I've just been, just been sitting and signing, signing. Yes. These, nice, nice. these out. Yeah. Um, so, that, so that's it's a lot of work because I, uh, I, I have to. First of all, I, I had to uh, redesign the artwork a bit because we need to change the the logo for the record label and the and the and the barcode. That took away the barcode basically and. A, a small changes and then we had to get a new you know I had to get a new LP master so I sent them obviously I sent new audio and then they sent back a test pressing I had to check that and confirm that and then when I got finally got the LPs outside my house like 200 and 300 kilos LPs so I had to carry them up myself up to this apartment which is in the fifth floor oh. <laughs> basically in the sixth floor because I, I put them up in my attic so I have them all in my loft and then I, I get them down here like, and I do like 10, 15 of them every day uh, because it takes about an hour to do 10, 15. So I, I open them up, I number them and I go into my system and I find out who ordered them and if they put in any note, maybe they want it signed to another name, maybe as a gift or whatever, and I sign them to, to them. And I just write a little message. Maybe I know the people who bought them, so maybe I personalize the message. And then uh, do this with like a silver pen, so it looks good. And then pack it, print out address labels, and then print out the shipping uh, the shipping costs, like stamps and shit. And then uh, put them on. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. And I go. Yeah, I get it. So that's what I'm. Uh, that's uh, that's part of what I'm doing now. <laughs> nice. Uh, on 6th of June, you'll be performing your Black Jazz album online. Can you tell us yeah. something more about that? Yeah, that's going to be exciting. It's Yesterday was the 8th of May, uh, and it was 75 years since the second world war hopefully the last world war ended yeah. <laughs> and and um the factory we're playing at on the 6th of june which 6th of june is actually the d-day which is another second world war uh, important day it's the, the day where the biggest allied allied uh, invasion of uh, the uh, west of france uh, which laid the foundation for for that was 1944 uh, which laid the foundation for the for the fall of the Nazi Empire. But anyway, um, the the factory we're playing at is uh, was initially a um, fertilizer factory. Uh, they made fertilizer for the farmers here in Norway, and the by, by byproduct of that first fertilizer uh, work is. Uh, uh, heavy water, uh, deuterium, which is H two O, I think, but it's it's got it's an isotope of the of the hydrogen uh, atoms that I think has if it has more electrons, there's more more neutrons. I'm not sure, but it's it's a special water that that you need. I think you need it in an, in an atom reactor or something like that. So they needed the Germans needed it to build their their atom bomb that they wanted, because if they got an atom bomb, they would fucking win the war. So Hitler obviously wanted that, and the rest of the world didn't want them to have that. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Yeah. So uh, the the Norwegian rebels they had uh, like a he H uh, like a head headquarters in London, and they planned this this sabotage mission. Uh, I think they were like three to five three five or seven people that went that 
that went to the factory in the middle of the winter yeah. and came in. It was a really heroic mission. They went there and they blew up the factory so they, to stop them for, from making and exporting heavy water. I also think they, they blew up a boat on the lake close by that had heavy water in them. So, so that means that they, they bought the world time to... Uh, to 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 win over Hitler before they got an atom bomb. So it was a, a really important mission, and there's a, 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 there's been a film made about it called The Heroes of Telemark, and there's a new TV series called War of uh, called The Heavy Water War, which is a Norwegian and British TV series, six episodes, and it looks really good. Uh, it came out two years ago or something like that. So so it's a uh, it's a Norwegian. Uh, it's in the way it's a part of Norwegian history and it's a really you know I like that story because it's it's just like the Star Wars story it's a rebel army small rebel army poor people who win against who do like heroic uh, feats and they win against the big bad yeah, yeah. The big bad empire so um, so that's where we're playing and we're and we we, we can't have audience oh, yeah, of course. Of so we are streaming it yes. so we're Planning, planning that part now. We did a streaming show a, a month ago that we did everything ourselves, like five, four or five cameras and our own lights, and you know we did the mix and ourselves. And it was a lot of work, but now we're, we're we are uh, doing this a little bit more like a bigger production. We got smoke and lights and and a bigger crews, so mm -hmm. we don't have to do everything ourselves. And, and we're selling tickets on, again, we're selling tickets on our own merch store, which is yeah. shop.shining.no. Yeah, we'll promote that on our page. Yeah, so that's the only place you can get tickets. We're not really sure exactly how we're going to stream it, but last time we streamed it on Facebook, but I don't think we're going to do that now. I think we're, you know, I mean, the plan is to stream it where, like, so that the audience needs, like, a password or a special URL or something to get in. Uh, but we'll see how you know we'll see how how the sales go and we also made like t-shirts for the for the show so people can buy can buy a special limited edition t-shirts with the graphics from from that show so it's like a package and um nice. yeah so that's exciting it's a, it's it, it's fun to kind of you know, see how much of these things that we can do ourselves or basically I can do you know that I can I made all the graphics myself, and I made the merchandise uh, website, and I made the promo video, and yeah, so it's a lot of work, but uh, you know, uh, somebody's got to do it. So, <laughs> we'll see if we want to watch it. Yeah. I think that Catatonia has uh, the same same kind of pro project today coming out, and they will be all streaming on their page, not on Facebook. Okay. Cool. So you can check them out how they did do, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the excellent second album of the project, Me and That Man, came out not so long ago. And uh, on it, you participated in the song Run with the Devil. How did you make contact with Nergal to make this collaboration happen? Um, well, Nergal contacted me in uh, August last year. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he usually. He usually communicates by recording voice messages on the Facebook Messenger. So I, he's I I saw like a voice message on on my phone, and uh, he was talking. He was uh, uh, he was talking to me and asking if I if I wanted to play on on his uh, on a song on on the next me and that man record. I I knew about the previous one. I'd listened to it and I liked it. And I I met Nergal. You know, right before they, you know, before they released the first album, he came to our show in Gdansk, where he lived, uh, in 2015, I think, and he was, you know, he was working on it, and he was a bit worried that, you know, what people might think about think of it because yeah. he was known for something else, you know. And I told him, I told him that, of course, you can do whatever you want, and if 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 it doesn't turn out to be good. This is what I told him. If it doesn't turn out to be good, or if you kind of 
regret or something like that, then you can just go back to, you know, when you're back doing behemoth again, people will be super happy. So you got nothing to lose. And if it's good, then fuck yeah, then you can do both. Yeah. And he, he replied, yeah, yeah, I can do anything except uh, reggae. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it turned out to be really good and really successful. Uh, so I was uh, super positive. And, then, so, and he also told me that that Vega, like Isham from Emperor, had also recorded the song. Uh, and that didn't matter to me. I wanted to do it anyhow. So he sent me a song and we started working. And then, uh, and then basically, here's the story. I, I, we were going to play with Emperors at some kind of festival the, in Europe the month after I'd started working. And I listened to, uh, if I got, had gotten his song back from Mix, and I listened to it, and it was so good. So I, I thought that shit, my song needs to be better. I need to do better. So I, after listening to his song, I went back to the studio to basically re-record all my vocals and make a new melody line and new new lyrics so i did that and it turned out really good uh so i'm, I'm glad i got to hear ishan's song and that it was so good because it made my song better you know um so that's really it and then after i was done i heard about all the other artists that was involved like um cory taylor and Matthew Heafy and and uh, you know all the all the big guys. So so uh, so I was even more happy to be part of the project then. But what's in, what's interesting is that when when Nargo asked me to join, he didn't say anything about these guys. He just asked me if I wanted to be part of the project. And I think he I think he approached everyone in that way. So this is so this is not you know the reason why. So you don't have people joining the project just to be part of a celebrity thing, you know? You have people joining the project because they want to make cool music. That, and that gives it, you know, you, you feel that it's kind of real instead of somebody just having an opportunity to have their face in a fucking magazine, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I like, I like that approach a lot. Okay, thank you. Um, there's We're going to be a tour actually with that band now in in april we, we yeah. were supposed to do a two weeks tour and i was supposed to be part of the tour but it was cancelled yeah, obviously too bad we're supposed to do a lot of festivals 10 i think 10 festivals were, were booked with that band we hoped for the metal days but they didn't happen also yes yeah. uh there is a talk of you partic participating in a new album of leading slovene metal band noctiferia uh can you tell us more about that yeah, I uh, I have recorded for for that. Uh, that is that I think uh, that is a tribute record for to to Leibach, if I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not. I played on the song. Actually, this it's it's uh, it's a while ago, so I don't really remember exactly what I did, but I remember that I liked the song and I really liked the idea. Of doing your tribute uh, album for for Leibach. Um but I think they're still trying to get a label to to release it. Is I haven't so I haven't heard from them in a while. But I I hope it comes out because yeah, we do it. They're a really cool band and really cool guys. And I remember I loved the song that I was working on. Yeah, nice. Um. In tw uh, 21 years of shining, uh, it's 21 years uh, already. Yeah, 1999, yeah, 20 yeah, or 20 10 years. albums. If I uh, if I get the note right, uh, uh, yeah, it's like we got a jazz album, jazz album, uh, pro uh, like studio album, studio album, and then black jazz. And let's include the live black jazz, like a live album, and then one 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 international black jazz society. And animal. I think maybe it's nine, nine or ten. I don't know. <laughs> the ten is the number. If I if I did my homework right, yeah. Uh, yeah. you you became recognized for your unique style of music. Um, yeah. Which music genre do you belong to? Which genre described you the best? That's a really really interesting question. You know? Yeah. Wow. Um. 
Can we, can, we can't play place you any, anywhere in the metal no. music. And I, I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I, I don't that. think. I don't think. Uh, you know, uh, there there might be two reasons why a person is is kind of easy to place in one genre. Two reasons. One reason is that they really just love that type of music. You know, yeah. if you only love uh, country music from the 1960s, then then obviously that's the only thing you're interested in. Another reason could be could be uh, if uh, you know, as a musician, there's only one thing you can do. You know, if you're if you're a rapper, and the only thing you can do is rap, and you can only rap on 80s uh, hip hop beats. Yeah. Then obviously that music, you know, musical genre, you're kind of stuck in that world. But if you, as a musician, if you're able to play different kind of music, yeah. and if you also like different kinds of music, like I do, I can play different kinds of music, and I like a lot of different kinds of music, then there's no reason to only do one type of music, you know? So and so for me, and I'm, I might be more versatile than most musicians because... I've studied a lot of different types of music. I, I grew up with metal music when I was a kid, but I studied jazz music at the Norwegian State Academy of Music uh, for 10 years, and I studied classical music, and then now I'm interested in, in, in metal music again. And I've, I've played as a professional musician, I've played with you know, pop groups, rock groups, stuff like that. And I learned to play a lot of different musical instruments. Yeah. So that, that opens, that makes me even more like uh, flexible. And then I'm interested in in, in uh, produ producing music and writing, and so my my tools allow me to be very flexible, mm -hmm. and but also my taste in music is very flexible. Mm -hmm. So, so I thought your question is what genre would I you know do I belong to? Uh, and I more and more I feel like it doesn't really matter, but I think. If you look at my where I came from, I I grew up with metal music. Yeah. I grew up with with Pantera, with Pantera, Sepultura, Death, uh, and a little you know, and Dream Theater also like that pro, pro metal so to speak. And uh, so that is that will always be a really big part of me. And then I also. And early, in my early life, I was really into jazz music also after metal. So that will all also always be a big part of me. So I think those are the two biggest, uh, you know, I, musical genre that I identify with. And I think the cool thing about black jazz is that both of them are, you know, important pillars in the black jazz idea. So, but now, you know, like, like you see, I do a lot of different music and I'm, I'm very happy that I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you perfectly mix jazz and metal together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember your performance on Metal Days, I think it was three years ago or something. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. on Winter Days of Metal. Yeah. Yeah. We met there. You signed my uh, copy of your LP. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, your last album, uh, Animal, came out in 2018. Uh, can we expect on uh, Can we expect a new album soon, based on the frequency which uh, which you release your albums? Are you working on anything new currently? Yes, yes, we're working on new music, and and we were planning on, you know, that was my main uh, project doing new music, and then Corona stuff came. Yeah, and there was so much work to do. Uh, with the with the coronavirus cancellations and trying to, trying to you know trying to figure out what to do with tours, move tours around, cancel tours, make streaming concerts, and then and then to to be able to have you know to work basically, I had to also focus more on making the merchandise store work, and then and then we have the black jazz release stuff. So so basically, with the coronavirus and with everything that happened. I haven't been able to write music since then because I've had to do everything else, you know. But as soon as as soon as we, I think hopefully my last when when we 
finally get to do the black chess streaming show i don't think i would want to you know i think i want to stop doing other stuff and just go to get back to writing music and we have quite a bit of uh of of songs that we're working on um but it, it's i it's too hard to say exactly when the record will be out but next year i hope that we'll have oh. a new album perfect um, do you know anything about the Slovene music scene? Uh, do you know any other bands than Octiferia? Did you reman- remember anyone good? Or you can say this band is really good in Slovene? Uh, I mean, Octiferia is the only one thing I remember now, but I, I oftentimes I don't really remember where the bands come yeah, from. Yeah, so, yeah. so there might be bands that I really like that I don't know. Yeah. You know, if I I don't know if they're from Slovenia or if they're from the neighbor country or you know it's uh, so I wouldn't really. But if you mention some, I might have. Uh, I'm and, and I don't want to come up with names either because it's like <laughs> that I'm you know it's, it's like it's like it's like meeting a, a guy from Asia and then and then just assuming he's from China and then he's <laughs> from from Japan and then. He gets pissed off, you know. So <laughs> if I mention the band that, and it turns out it's from Serbia, then I I look like a fucking idiot, you know. I I don't I I wouldn't want to go down that road. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, during the quarantine, uh, we have to spend our time mostly at home. <laughs> yeah. Right now, uh, tell me what your days look like now. <laughs> Well, see the situation. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I have a kid who I have a son who's four and a half years old, and oh, he, nice. they, cl- yeah, it was really nice. But they closed down the kindergarten, so he's been home for the last four weeks. He's now in kindergarten, but it's we deliver him at a certain time, and we have to get him at a certain time, and it's it's a little bit shorter than I'm used to. So my work days. Are shorter. My girlfriend, she uh, she worked as a hairdresser, so they she couldn't work either. So while and during the worst part part of the quarantine, I was actually able to work. So I went to my studio and I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. Um, and now that my girlfriend is working, then I have to be home more to take care of my kids. I pick him up. Um, so it's it's a little bit different now. So usually. But what, what's going on is that either I sleep, eat, work out, uh, or make dinner or take care of my kid, or I'm in the studio working and practicing. It's, there's not, no time for anything else because there's just too much to do. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's actually, it's more, I'm more stressed out now and I got more stuff to do now than I, than I had before. Corona. I thought it was going to be different. I thought it was going to be the opposite that I didn't have anything to do, but it's just fucking crazy. So I'm I'm working all the time. Um, but since I have my own studio and yeah. there's nobody else there, I can work there. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. And I don't do I don't do public transportation. I, I use my bike every day, so it doesn't matter. So I'm I I work more than, now than I've ever worked before. Oh, nice. Uh, That'll be pretty much everything. Um, thank you for the time, Jorgen. Thank uh, you. Looking forward to, to hear some great new music from you. I hope thank that you. happens soon. Uh, we will uh, we will prom- promote your uh, stream concert on our page. Cool. Glad to do it. Um, and I'll send you the interview after I record it on uh, on my computer. Okay. Well, I will. I'll send you a link now with some info. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, I can do it. Now. Let me see if I can do it here on. Let me see because I have. I. Um, let me see. Uh, I yeah, last night I did a I did a Twitch live stream where I talked a little bit about the some stuff that I talked told you about now about the. Yeah. About the, um, well, I'll send you. I'll basically I'll send you a little email with a couple of links, and so you can, you know, so you can take a look at it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank yeah. you a lot. Uh, stay safe. You too. Bye. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Bye bye.